Hi folks, it's Jang from the Friendly Forums at UltimateRC.com. In this video, I'm going to be testing out or just quickly reviewing the FlySky FSGT3B. It's a little bit of a mouthful. FlySky FSGT3B. 2.4 gigahertz value radio system. It's sold by Hobby Parts, Hobby Parts with a Z, dot com in the US for 35 bucks. First of all, of course, you get the radio system itself, the transmitter, like so, it's a pistol grip, has a screen on the top. I'll look at that in just a second. Comes with a single receiver, and these receivers are absolutely tiny and it weighs almost nothing. You have a tool, which is a binding tool that's uh, actually used. You plug it into the receiver. It's similar to the way that the Spectrum systems work. You plug it into one of the channels that's marked on the receiver uh, to put the receiver into binding mode. You have a short little stubby yeah, bit of antenna tube, just enough to fit the short 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, antenna wire. And then it also comes with a small CD and this CD has on it a, basically a trial version, the, the, the basic most restricted version of Virtual RC, VRC software on it. Uh, you can actually use the FSGT3B or the GT2 using the Direct Connect port. Uh, right here there's an adapter that you can get to connect to that. Uh, to USB to go into your computer and then you can play games with it. However, it does not come with that adapter in this case, so I think it's a little bit silly that they give you the game but they don't uh, they don't give you the adapter you need to use it. You have to buy that adapter separately. Uh, one thing that is conspicuously absent here on my table is an instruction manual. Well, my air radio didn't come with an instruction manual. So, now in all seriousness, it was totally just a packaging fluke. Uh, I've seen a bunch of people that have gotten this radio. It comes with the proper instruction manual. Mine just happened to not come with it. Bad, bad luck for me. Uh, but uh, fortunately, you can get the instruction sheet if you have luck as bad as mine. You can get it online at FlySky's website for free. You can download it as a PDF and it's in English. Let's take a look at this uh, radio itself a little bit more closely. I'm just going to show you some different angles. You can see it's it's an aesthetic design. You can see it's more of a, a, a modern racing transmitter design. I do not believe it's it's a direct copy of any, any existing ones. I believe they came up with this design on their own. Yeah, but it is, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice looking design, you know, it's not something that you would be in any way ashamed to be up on the driver's stand holding. Uh, it, it's, uh, the, the plastics that are used are, are satin, you know, it's not really shiny, uh, so it, it's, a, it's a proper looking radio. And then your power button is back here, and it turns on, check that out. Even from a distance, you can see, and even with a lot of artificial light in this room, you can still see the menu uh, system quite, uh, quite easily. Okay, so let's take a look at the menu really quick. Like I said, it's, it's very large and very clear. It's backlit. The backlight will automatically uh, turn off after a certain number of seconds. The default display, there it goes. The default display is showing you what model number that you're on, and you can actually configure these three letters and numbers right here, these three digits. You can actually edit that per model number. You've got this multifunction dial over here, which allows you to, to switch between things, left and right. Here you're just going between what model number uh, you're on and what the voltage is of your battery pack or of your, your batteries that are installed. And you also can push down on this button to enter. In this case, I'm entering the menu system first. You can see just how bright and clear these are. Uh, uh, they, they didn't try to go digital with the display. They just have uh, pre-printed uh, words in there. It makes it much more clear. I'm going to go ahead and push that again, which I just did, and now I'm able to select what model uh, memory that I'm choosing from. And as you can see, it goes from 0 up to 9. So you've got a 10 model memory in there. 
name that's just for editing the the three digits here the shortcut uh, to help remind you what model this is rather than just having a number of course you have reversing available for all three channels endpoint adjustment for all three channels abs that's anti-lock braking system uh, or auto brake system they call it here uh, the, the general idea there is, is that you have uh, a slow normal and fast rate uh, which is adjusting how quickly it will apply the brakes when you slam full forward on on the trigger I did some experimentation with this uh, I would not rely on this really to help preventing uh, skids it does work to some degree but uh, it is a purely electronic system that only works from the transmitter. It doesn't seem to have any feedback, which I really wouldn't expect to have feedback from the vehicle. Um, it certainly obviously doesn't have sensors in the tires to determine when you're breaking loose. So don't expect that to be a, a magic bullet for stopping you from, uh, from skidding under braking. You've got exponential control, dual rate control, of course, and you also have you also have trims, which is just going to be repeating what shows up on the standard uh, trims per channel. Now you've got your shortcuts. Of course, you've got shortcuts to uh, to steering trim, and in this case, it's showing you uh, I'm, I'm altering my my trim to the left and right. That's neutral. That's to the right one, to the right two. That's to the left one, to the left two. And you can access that without being in the menu system, of course. You don't have to go into the menus at any time. You can just push these buttons. And then you've got your throttle, uh, your throttle trim over here. Uh, other buttons, uh, a back button just to take you back to the top level of, of the menu system. And then there's a bind button, of course. That's important when you get a new receiver. Um, just looking a little bit more at the details of the controller, you also have a dual rate setting, a shortcut to dual rate for the, uh, the steering channel right here on your thumb. That's pretty easy to get to. You do have to move your thumb back a little bit unless you have really small hands, uh, but you can kind of activate it from the side of your thumb. And then you've got your channel 3 trim. There's a shortcut to it right here. Channel 3 is a toggle, and there's the button for it right there. I believe that the, what they intend for you to do is to activate that with your middle finger. You just push it in. You can hopefully hear it a little bit. It just goes in, in and comes out. It's a, it's a momentary switch, and it just toggles between the two settings, uh, which you can set by the end points for channel 3. So the ergonomics on that, not so hot. It's a little bit difficult to get in there, really having to push in quite a bit, uh, and it's it's not a very natural way for your fingers to want to work. Um, you can uh, take your thumb away and, and use your thumb. I think that's a little bit easier, uh, but uh, it's still it's not the most the most uh, comfortable position. While I'm looking at uh, the finer features of the physical design of the product. You can see there's, it's using the dropped style, more modern uh, uh, position of the steering wheel. Feels very natural in the hand, and then this wheel has uh, a, a coating on it that is fairly firm, uh, but a little bit soft. It's, it has a really good feeling for such an inexpensive uh, radio system. I tend to be a little bit picky about that, about the feel, because that, you know, that's that's how you're going to get your your feedback of how much movement you're putting in there. It's very easy to touch it lightly and not uh, not have any slip on there. It has a, a decent texture to it, a nice feel, a nice soft feel. Uh, last thing, while I'm looking at it up close, battery tray uses eight AA batteries. Unfortunately, it doesn't use four uses 8, uh, which is a little bit old school. Some of the newer 2.4 gigahertz transmitters are using just 4. This one still uses 8. I highly recommend that you get some nice, fresh nickel metal hydride uh, rechargeable batteries to use for that. And that's about enough of looking at it in the studio now. Let me go ahead and get this thing installed and test it out in the field. So I installed the system in uh, Stampede 4x4 here and drove it around for about an hour uh, with one break in the middle and it 
did everything that I expected it to. It was very comfortable, uh, very, very controllable, responded as quickly as my brain could, could tell. You're really not going to get a lot of information from me just driving a vehicle around in circles. Or are you? How's that for a range test for you? It's far enough away that I had to use not only the 10x optical zoom, but another 4x digital zoom on top of that to be able to see the vehicle with a little bit of clarity. I literally just could not tell what was going on with the vehicle from a distance other than roughly whether it was moving to the left or to the right. So it has plenty of strength that could have gone farther than that uh, if I could actually see the vehicle. Plenty of strength, plenty of range. It's responsive, what can I say? It does its job as a radio. All in all, just an astonishing value. Really surprising how much they're able to give you for such a low cost. Uh, a lot of people have already bought these things. I haven't seen any negative feedback about them whatsoever. Quality, uh, quality control seems to be uh, very good. Uh, numbers of DOA models have been very, very low. I love the backlit huge bright menu that's really easy to see easy to go through um, the feel of the of the wheel is good the balance in my hand is good the only thing that i didn't like was that position of the, the third channel uh, uh, switch it's just a little bit awkward and then i think the biggest sell the biggest positive thing about the fly sky systems that they have out right now would be the receivers not only are they just tiny and so lightweight, but they cost $8 or less. I mean, the, the normal retail price is 12 bucks, but they've been on hobbyparts.com for $8 or $7.50 uh, for many months as of the time of, of this video here. Just an astonishing value. I think the last receiver that I bought for my Airtronics uh, radio system costs uh, $79, so 10 times as much as one of these. And for that reason, I am literally myself considering keeping this radio and getting rid of my trusty Airtronics uh, MX3 uh, FG radio system just because I can sell that off and buy a crate of these little receivers, have a receiver for every single vehicle that I own, never have to change uh, receivers again. It's so inexpensive, it's a comfortable system, it's got tons and tons and tons of range, good features. I really can't say anything seriously bad about this. This is definitely a recommended buy from me if you're looking for a low cost 2.4 gigahertz radio system. It's the FlySky FSGT3B, available from Hobby Parts, Hobby Parts with a Z, Dot com for about 35 bucks. Hope this was informative for you, and I hope to see you on the friendly forums at ultimatercom Bye for now.